There she is. The Invisible Man's niece. Are you sure that's her? Yes, and she's all alone. Couldn't be better. When we've got her, he'll do anything we ask. But don't hurt her. Don't worry. I have a way with children. Better gag her with your scarf. Anything? Not yet. Not even a boot? Don't be silly. You must be Sally. Your uncle's the Invisible Man. That's right. Why? I only wanted to make certain. One. I think it's going to be a big one. Well done, Uncle Peter. Quick, Sally. Where's that landing net? Where'd you put it? Hold on, Uncle Peter. I'm coming. Careful, Mom. Don't scare it. Here she comes now. Steady. Steady. Oh, well, at least it's a fish. I've got it, Uncle Peter. I've got it. What happened? Where's the child? Not this time. She's with her Uncle Peter. Is he there himself? Yes, lucky for me, he didn't see me. He's just a few yards down the bank. You don't have time to get her. No, thank you, Mr. Crowther. I'm not the scary type, but I'm not taking on the invisible man. Very well. You must be patient. Wait till she's alone. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I do my exercises every day, will I grow up big and strong like you? I expect so, Sally. I wish I could grow up invisible. You'd never get married. Why not? Well, um, that's all for today. Breakfast. <laughs> Peter, if I was invisible, I needn't go to school. Why not? Because nobody will know I wasn't there. Come on, Sal, you'll be late. Hi, Mummy. Remember, I'll come and call for you at four o'clock. Can't Uncle Peter come and call for me? One day, Mummy, in his invisible clothes, I've told all the girls about him. Not for the moment, Sal. He's got enough worries as it is. The press won't give him a moment's peace. They tried to interview me. What did you tell them? My lips are sealed. Goodbye, Uncle Peter. Goodbye, Sally. Uh, you better hurry or Mr. Bruce won't wait. Dr. Henderson? Yes. I got your message. This is terribly sad. Is little Sally ready to go? I've sent for her. You haven't told her anything? No. Are you going to? I 
think it better to let her uncle do that. You know the famous Mr. Brady? Yes, of course. He is with her mother at the hospital now. How is she? She's such a girl. That's, that's why we have to hurry. Is she conscious? She was when I left. She was asking for the child. Dear. Come in. So this is Sally. How do you do? I'm Dr. Henderson. How would you like to come for a little run in my car? No, thank you. Mum is fetching me. Sally. I'm afraid your mum is... That's quite all right, Sally. I promised your mummy I'd come and pick you up. In fact, I'll take you to see her now. You mean I can leave school early? Yes, Sally. Hooray! You run and get your hat and coat. Thank you very much, Dr. Henderson. I shall be anxious to hear how things go. We should do all that we can. What's the matter, Sally? Why are you looking at me like that? I was just thinking. What? How much nicer you would look if you were invisible. Like your Uncle Peter, you mean? Yes. Tell me, Sally, is your Uncle Peter very fond of you? Of course he is. He often says he loves me best in the world. I'm pleased to hear that, Sally. That's what I was hoping. your pardon? Well, I thought you were in hospital. Hospital? No, I'm perfectly all right. But the accident... Uh, well, didn't you run into a truck this afternoon? No, why? Where's Sally? She's gone to see you in the hospital. They telephoned and said that you'd been hurt. Well, there must be some mistake. But then Dr. Henderson called. He took Sally to see you. How long ago was that? About an hour ago. An hour ago? I understood your brother was there with you. He certainly was not there. Mr. Brady's been working at home all day. I just left him. Are you sure? Dr. Henderson seems so certain. This uh, doctor, do you know him well? I've never seen him before. And you let Sally go with him? I must get back to my brother. Now, take it easy, Dee. The police will be here any minute. There should be a very simple explanation to it. It wouldn't surprise me if it weren't some newspaper stunt. I'll get it. Yes, speaking. Mr. Brady, I presume. Come in, Sergeant. Uh, it's about this little girl who's been reported missing, sir. Yes, I see. I understand. D, this is Sergeant Peterson. He wants full details. Oh, there's no need. Sally's perfectly all right. Uh, it's all been a mistake. But I'm Dee. sorry to have brought you here for nothing. D. Oh, that's all right, madam. We're used to these false alarms. Only too glad the little girl's safe. Thank you, Sergeant. What happened? Well, there was a man on the phone. He says he's got Sally. But if we tell anyone about it, it might be the worst for her. What does he want us to do? We've got to go and fetch her. All he wants to do is to meet you, and then I can have Sally back. He's left a note in the car telling us where to drive to. No, Dee. You drive the car. Well, what about you? I'll be there, but invisible. You'll be awfully cold in those invisible lab clothes of yours at this time of year. Wait till I meet the man who's taken Sally. I'll soon warm up. 
Where do we go from here? It says here, straight out of four corners and take the next lane on the left. must be the empty house. Where's your brother? That was the arrangement, wasn't it? Doc Dr. Brady couldn't come. I want Sally. Where is she? What about the deal we made on the telephone? Who are you? Now, that would be telling now, wouldn't it? If there's anything you want from Sally, I'm the one to speak to. Where is she? I don't like people who break their word. After all, a promise is a promise, isn't it? Do you want a, a story, an interview? Oh, no, no. I don't want a story. I'm not clever enough to write for the papers. And what do you want? That's what I was hoping to tell your brother. What have you done with her? Sally! 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 I like a woman who does as she's told. Now get back. If you're lucky, I'll phone you again, see? And next time, bring your brother, or else. Now leave us to me, Dee, and wait in the car. I'll take care of this one. Now. Well then, uh, so you are here. That's just a taste of what's coming to you. Where's the child? Now, uh, let's take this calmly, see, eh? After all, we've got the kids. Start talking. Can't get away from me. There's no call to be rough now. Rough? I haven't started yet. Where is she? Okay. Take your time. at a price. Well, well, the thing
things you scientists do. Fascinating. I want the child. You shall have her later. Okay. What do I have to do? Well, I'll settle for cash. I'll take uh, 50,000, that's all. You're out of your mind. I haven't got 5,000. Yes, you have. I wish I knew where. In the bank, of course. Hasn't it occurred to you that all you've got to do is to walk into any bank and just take what you need? I don't want any part of it. That's too bad for little Sally. Such a nice girl. Why, you... Take your time. All right. I'll do it. But how? First, you want the keys. Banks are such suspicious people. They have two keys to the safe. The manager keeps one and the head clerk the other. First, you want the manager's key. The manager of the bank I have in mind lives right over there, flat number 16. Okay, I'll get it. <laughs> if you're cold, why not hurry up and get it over? trying to be funny, I suppose. The way I should have to go to the door at this time of night. I've been a gangster or a thug or anyone. I would have gone, my dear, but if you went out so quickly, I didn't get a chance. You're never anywhere where you wanted. Now, where do you keep your keys? Ah, trousers. Sorry, pal. Just alone. I'm freezing. Here's the door key. Now listen. The minute you open the door, the alarm will go off. You'll have to work fast. It won't take the police more than two minutes to get here. Supposing I'm caught, what about Sally? Simple. No money, no Sally. Sorry, gentlemen. It's 
Leave me alone. They'll get it back. but it can't be helped. A bus will pass in three hours, four, perhaps. I hope we don't scare the life out of the passengers. And I hope you don't mind if we shelter in the boat. It's kind of cold. Go ahead. It's not mine. Joe, you go in that car. Di, come with me. We'll skip the main Rochester Road and cut across to the Maidstone Road. Yes, Gov. Did you get the money? It's in the back. Do you think you can nip over the side of the boat without being seen? Yes. Good. Now run down the gangplank, jump off onto the mud, and slip along under the bank to the right. Wait about a hundred yards out. I'll be there directly. Quick. Now. It's 11 o'clock. I'll pay you off. And first, Joe, lose that car. I'll ditch the others in the suburbs. And remember, Di, no speeding. We'll go on, on your way. The money's in there! What's going on here? You weren't driving that car? No. Well, who was then? Those men are bike lovers. Look in the back of their car. Hey, Bob. Have a look at this. Hey. I still want to know who was driving this car. My uncle, of course. Oh, yes? Where is he then? Right here, he's invisible. <laughs> 